Hey guys, welcome to my year-end video. I've been wanting to do a video on HDR workflow for some time, and today I'm going to show you my tips for getting the best looking HDR video out of Final Cut Pro. And speaking of HDR, I want to let you know that I just released a brand new tutorial on our website called HDR Editing and Delivery, where I break down the entire process. Check it out below using the link in the description. Also, we're running a holiday sale on all our tutorials and plugins, including the aforementioned HDR tutorial. Just use the coupon code also in the description. With that out of the way, cue the music. Before I jump into Final Cut Pro, I want to talk briefly about the camera app I use to shoot HDR footage. The app is called Black Magic Cam, and I'm quite positive that most of you have downloaded this app and are already using it. Be that as it may, there is one setting that makes this app indispensable for HDR shooting. Unlike the built-in camera app that only allows you to shoot ProRes and Apolog, this app gives you the ability to record in HEVC Apolog, which is really cool because you get all the benefits of shooting log without the large footprint of ProRes files. And let's face it, you don't always need to shoot ProRes. It really depends on what you're shooting and for whom. This also means that you don't have to shoot with an SSD connected to your iPhone 15 Pro in order to record Apple Log. In fact, this app allows you to record 4K ProRes Apple Log at up to 60 frames per second directly to the iPhone's internal storage. While I don't recommend this since you'll run out of storage space quickly, it's good to know that you can do it in a pinch if needed. The second thing I like about this app is that you can record in four different flavors of ProRes, where the built-in camera app limits you to just Apple ProRes 422. If you're going to shoot ProRes, why not record in HQ if you have the drive space? With Final Cut Pro open, I'll import the media by dragging a folder of HDR media into the event. Whenever you shoot in HDR using either the iPhone's native camera app or Blackmagic's camera app, Final Cut Pro reads the HDR flags that are embedded in the file and asks you if you want your library to switch to HDR to accommodate one or more wide gamut clips, or leave the library set as the default SDR color space. This is actually a very important step when working with HDR clips, because even if you choose not to export an HDR movie, you can still output an SDR movie from an HDR library. If you begin with an SDR library, you won't be able to output an HDR movie until you convert the library. In my experience, I find that it's better to work in a library that gives me more latitude to adjust the brightness and color of my clips. With the clips imported, let's examine a few clips in the scopes and in the inspector. I'll select this shot of the house, press Command 7 to bring up the video scopes, I'll reveal the info pane and set the metadata viewing mode to extended, and make the inspector full height. I'll then reduce the size of the browser and timeline to see a large side by side view of the scopes, the viewer, and the inspector. Both the scopes and the info inspector tell us that the clip is a Rec 2020 hybrid log gamma clip. When you shoot an HLG on your iPhone, this is what you get, a fully exposed HDR image. This particular shot was recorded in Apple ProRes HLG HDR using the Blackmagic camera app. The downside of shooting in HLG HDR is that the brightness and color is baked into the image and you don't have a lot of room to make adjustments. I'll come back to this shot in a moment. I'll select this clip, 7832. This is the same subject recorded with Apple Log in Apple ProRes 422HQ using the Blackmagic camera app. Looking at the scopes, there's so much more headroom to work with compared to the HLG clip we just looked at. The brightest part of the image is sitting just below 1000 nits on the scale, but we could push this as high as 10,000 nits if we were working in a PQ project. Whenever you import a clip that was shot with Apple Log, a LUT is automatically applied to normalize the brightness and color for the library color space that you chose when creating the library. Turn off the LUT by selecting None, and you'll see the flat, low contrast look that is typical of log encoded footage. Since the LUT does a really good job of getting the contrast and colors to look good right out of the box, let's re enable it. The LUT is a great starting point for grading in both SDR and HDR. I'll add both clips to the timeline by right clicking and choosing New Project. I'll set the color space to Wide Gamut HDR Rec 2020 HLG, the format to 4K, and the frame rate to 60p. Then name the project and press Return. These two clips are now in a Rec 2020 HLG project as indicated in the scopes. I'll move the playhead over the first clip. 
As already noted, this clip was recorded in HLG on the iPhone 15 Pro. This image has good dynamic range and color to be sure, but if I zoom in to look at some of the detail, for example, the yellow leaves in the tree in the background, or the bark in the foreground tree trunk, the image has a highly processed look. But there's something else. If I skim back and forth over the edit point to compare the two clips, the HLG HDR clip, while certainly brighter, does not look natural to me. The tree trunk of the foreground looks almost as bright as the tree in the background. Everything in the image is bright and over sharpened. HLG HDR is the perfect format if you don't plan on color correcting your clips because all this processing is designed to make the image look great on iPhones, not televisions. What makes it look good on a phone are the very things that make it unacceptable for professional HDR work. That's why it's absolutely essential to shoot in a log format if you plan on delivering an HDR. Moving over to the next clip, this one was shot in HLG, but in ProRes HQ and Apple Log using the Blackmagic camera app. Unlike the previous clip, there's more latitude in the scopes, giving me room to shape the image with a color corrector. I'll press Command 6, then apply the Color Adjustments Corrector. This color corrector was introduced in Final Cut Pro 10.6.6 and is specifically designed for HDR content, but it works for SDR content as well. Instead of color wheels or curves, you work with simple slider controls. The most important control is the control range. By default, the control range is set for HLG to match the project but you can also set this to SDR or different PQ target white values. In a nutshell, what the control range does is ensure that the sliders scale properly with respect to the gamma curve you're working with, so that when you make adjustments to the exposure and shadows, they affect the correct tonal ranges in the image. For this shot, I don't want my adjustments affecting the entire frame. For now, I'm happy with the exposure of the background, the house, the tree, and the sky. I want to control just the exposure in the foreground. To do that, I'll add a shape mask and adjust it to cover the lower half of the frame. I'll also give the mask some aggressive feathering so that my adjustments will blend with the uncorrected background. I'll then bring up the exposure to 50. I'm not at all concerned about the traces going above 103 in the scopes because HLG has a peak brightness of 1000 nits. Next, I'll use a shadow slider. This slider, more than any other, shows the benefits of shooting ProRes Log. As I move the slider, you can see there's so much more detail available in the shadows, something that's just not possible with clips recorded in HLG HDR. I'll set this to minus 20. The brightness slider is like a gamma control. You can increase or decrease the overall exposure while not affecting the shadows and highlights. I'll set this to 25 and boost the saturation to 10. I'm not completely satisfied with the exposure in the background, so I'll select the Outside Mask button, then reduce the exposure. I'll also rotate the mask, just so that my foreground corrections are limited to the fence and the maple leaves. I'll turn off the mask and play the image full screen. Looks great. Now let's compare it to the highly processed HDR HLG clip. Which one do you prefer? So I hope you enjoyed that video. And before I sign off, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank you all for watching our videos and buying our tutorials and plugins. Mark and I truly appreciate your support and we couldn't do what we do without you. We wish you all the merriest of Christmases and a blessed and prosperous holiday season. We'll see you again in the new year.